uh, our guest, uh, Mr. Ulyuzo uh, Miyahu from uh, the Bank of Japan. I would like to ask uh, my colleague, Max Sato, to uh, explain the rules regarding uh, the embargo on the uh, text of uh, the speech of Mr. Miyahu, which will be distributed at the end of uh, this uh, conference. The conference will be conducted into Eng in English. Uh, so the questions uh, have to be asked in English. Please, Max, can you explain, uh, uh, tell us how the uh, embargo, the meaning of the word embargo, and how it works? I think most of you are familiar with this rule. Um, please consider it a lookup. So you cannot share the content from the speech in the Q&A until the end of the event. Um, I'm going to say the embargo is lifted, kiking this at the end of the event. Then you can transmit anything. But until then, please don't share anything with your colleagues, friends, family members. You know, don't uh, upload it on your uh, Facebook account or whatever. Thank you very much. Mr. Ryuzo Miyao is, I, I just learned from Max Sato before, is the longest serving member of the policy board on the Bank of Japan. He's maybe also a professor of semantics and ancient uh, Greek at the Bank of Japan because he will explain us for not for three hours as yesterday with the uh, mayor of Osaka, Mr. Toru Hashimoto. It will be much shorter. Mr. Miao will explain us the expression uh, uncharted territory. According to Wikipedia, uh, sounds, uh, facial expressions, body language, have also semantic uh, meaning uh, content. And in written language, things like paragraph structure, punctuation, bear uh, semantic uh, content. So uh, to study the body language of Mr. Miao now during his speech is very uh, important. Mr. Miao uh, got a PhD in economics at Harvard be before to make all his career or most of his career at Kobe University. Uh, he was born in uh, Osaka. Uh, the specialist of semiology and uh, semiotics at Bloomberg have discovered in the record of an April 26 meeting at Bank of Japan a split among policymakers like uh, Ryuzo Miyao overachieving 2% inflation and mixed views on bond market turbulence after uh, Governor uh, Kuroda uh, cited signs uh, the economy is picking up. Anyway, uh, the Bank of Japan is a great fund. It's Mr. Paul Krugman. Uh, he's always very, very clear, Mr. Krugman. You don't need to be assisted by a specialist of semiology to understand what he has to say. Mr. Uh, Paul K Krugman says if abenomics work, it will serve a dual uh, purpose, giving Japan itself a much needed boost and the rest of us uh, the needed antidote uh, to uh, policy uh, lethargy. So please uh, reserve a very, very warm welcome. Welcome to Mr. Miao. We are very happy to develop the relationship of trust with Bank of Japan. Good afternoon. Um, it is my honor and pleasure to have an opportunity to speak today at the Foreign Correspondents Club of Japan. About five years have passed since the outbreak of the global financial crisis. Central banks in the advanced economies have been implementing unconventional monetary policies with the introduction of quantitative and qualitative monetary easing, or QQE, in April 
the Bank of Japan has decided to go to step farther into uncharted territory of monetary policy. Today, let me begin by presenting a general picture of the current developments and outlook for economic activity and prices. Japan's economy has started to pick up. Public investment has continued to increase, and housing investment has generally been picking up. Private consumption has increased resilience. Exports and production have stopped decreasing. Business fixed investment appears uh, remain resilient. I'm sorry, business fixed investment appears to have stopped weakening. As for the outlook, domestic demand is likely to remain resilient due to the effects of monetary easing and various economic measures. The growth rates of overseas economies will gradually pick up. Japan's economy is expected to return the moderate recovery pass around mid-2013. Thereafter, a virtuous cycle of production, income, and spending is expected to maintain. Japan's economy is likely to continue growing above the potential, of, of potential growth rate. The year-on-year -year rate of change in consumer price index, CPI, has recently been around 0% or slightly negative. As for the outlook, it is expected to follow an upward trend that reflects factors such as an improvement in aggregate supply and demand balance, as well as a rise in the medium to long-term inflation expectations. Towards the latter half of the three-year projection period, the CPI inflation is likely to reach the price stability target of two, about 2%. Uh, please look at chart in your handout uh, that shows the outlook, chart one. Based on the general picture in my view, uh, in my view, the path toward achieving the 2% price stability target is expected to go through the following six steps as I indicated in the chart two on the hand handout. First, the recovery in overseas economies will strengthen the recovery trend in Japan's production and exports, thereby increasing its corporate profits. Second, financial conditions, including asset prices, will become even more accommodative. Behind that are several factors, such as continued trend of investors' active risk-taking, or so-called risk-on trend, a moderate rise in U U.S. long-term interest rates, and strong monetary easing by the Bank of Japan. Third, these two steps will encourage firms positive initiatives to make fixed investment and implement structural reform that will in turn bring a gradual rise in the potential growth rate of Japan's economy. Fourth, with the, with the expectations for sustainable economic recovery, household spending should stay firm and prices should gradually increase, accompanied by the narrowing of the negative output gap. Fifth, public inflation expectations will gradually rise. And in that situation, the actual inflation rate is likely to rise above 1% during fiscal 2014. And sixth, as a virtuous cycle of a five-step path is maintained, economic recovery will continue. The public's expected inflation and the medium to long-term trend inflation, or the so-called anchor, will likely increase gradually toward 2%. As a result, the actual inflation rate is projected to continue to rise, approaching the 2% price stability target. Now, the Q, QQE quantitative and qualitative monetary easing. In April, the bank introduced the QQE policy. The new policy constitutes all necessary measures to achieve the price stability target of 2% at the earliest possible time, with a time horizon of about two years. A set of policy measures represents the bank's very strong easing stance. As for the size of the bank's balance sheet as a whole, namely quantity, the operational target was changed from the overnight call rate to the monetary base. It will increase 
at an annual rate, annual pace of 60 to 70 trillion yen. As for the composition of assets on the balance sheet, namely quality, the bank increased the amount and extended the maturities of Japanese government bonds, or JGBs, to be purchased. Specifically, the bank will purchase a massive amount of JGBs so that the outstanding amount of the, its JGB holding will increase by 50 trillion yen annually. The average remaining maturity of JGBs purchased will be extended to about seven years, and the bank substantially increase the purchase of risk assets such as exchange-traded funds, ETFs, and Japan's Real Estate Investment Trust, JREITS. The new policy, the new policy framework has three main things. First, the bank took very drastic steps, both in terms of quantity and quality. Second, rather than adopting an incremental approach, the bank took all out measures necessary to overcome deflation. And third, the bank decided to continue with the QQE policy as long as it is necessary for maintaining 2% price stability target in a stable manner. The bank just a firm commitment to continuing the powerful easing by linking it with the policy target. If I may add another point, the bank will conduct the current policy within the framework of flexible inflation targeting. Like many other central banks that have adopted inflation targeting, the price stability target will be achieved in a balanced manner accompanied by a sustained economic recovery. That does not mean that the bank conducts monetary policy rigidly to achieve the 2% target inflation rate at any cost. While the target is pinpointed at 2%, it does not mean that any deviation from 2% is unacceptable. Rather, the inflation rate has to be maintained averagely and stably. Now I will talk about long-term interest rate path. Transmission channels of the QQE policy are mainly working for mainly for working on long-term interest rates and asset prices, as well as for encouraging portfolio rebalancing and inflation expectations. Please look at chart three in, that describes this transmission mechanism. Here, let me summarize the impact of the QQE on long-term long interest rate. First, the purchase of JGB will absorb those securities circulating in the market. Thus, it will continue to put downward pressure on the term premium of JGB yields. Second, as expectations for economic, economic recovery and inflation rise, the expected short-term rate interest rates, that is the future pass of short-term interest rates, will gradually rise, will, will gradually increase. Note that the expected short-term interest rates form the basis of long-term interest rates. There may be upward pressure on long-term interest rates in Japan, reflecting, for example, a steady recovery in the United States and overseas economies, and a rise in long-term interest rates overseas. That can also be interpret interpreted as a rise in expected short-term interest rates. Therefore, the future path of long-term interest rates will receive both upward and downward pressure. It will depend on policy actions and their effects, as well as change, changes in external conditions. Here's, my, here's an important point. Even when there is upward pressure on long-term interest rates due to expectations for economic recovery, monetary policy will continue to put downward pressure on interest rates, and therefore strongly support economic recovery. If the aggressive easing policy continues when expectations for economic recovery and inflationary expectations steadily rise, it will further increase an economic stimulus. Such effect has to be well kept in mind. In the meantime, there has been a rise in long-term interest rates. 
Several factors contributed to that move, such as a rise in long-term interest rates in the United States and Europe, as well as a rise in Japanese stock prices. The bank has been carefully examining developments in the bond, markets, bond market and closely communicating with market participants. In order to encourage policy effects, the bank continued to pursue flexible market operations by adjusting the frequency, pace, and scope of purchases as necessary. When considering the future path of long-term interest rates, we need to avoid an unintended rise in interest rates due to an increase in fiscal risk premiums. The government's efforts toward restoring fiscal soundness have received close attention overseas. It is strongly expected that such efforts will steadily make progress. More fundamentally, to reduce the risk of an unintended rise in interest rates, it is necessary to constantly enhance the credibility of Japan's economy and its growth potential through regulatory and institutional reforms. To keep extremely accommodative financial conditions leading to economic growth, it is critical to further support animal spirits, that is, entrepreneurship in the private sector. That should be achieved mainly through regulatory and institutional reforms, as well as trade policy. Meanwhile, an exit strategy from the unprecedented easing policy is expected to, is expected to take some time. It is still premature to design a smooth exit strategy that market participants can anticipate. On this point, the Federal Reserve has been discussing exit strategies and making efforts to convey information to the public. What matters to, is to ensure that long and short-term interest rates as a whole will follow a stable path. It also matters to enhance the market's predictability for the outlook for economic activity and prices, as well as policy management through enhanced communications. While, keeps, while keeping such future challenges in mind, the bank will continue to conduct appropriate monetary policy. Now let me talk about risks. There are both upside and downside risks concerning the outlook for economic activity and prices. Those include developments in overseas economies and global financial markets, the conduct of policies both at home and abroad, and the private sector's economic activity. Going forward, if such risks come out, we will, com we will comprehensively assess how large and persistent these risks are and make adjustment as needed. The point is, the bank is firmly committed to continuing with the QQE policy as long as necessary to achieve the 2% price stability target. Now, I will talk about Japan's experience under quantitative easing policy. The bank pursued quantitative easing policy, QE policy, between 2000, 2001 and 2006. It was a policy framework regarded as a front runner of unconventional monetary easing. In terms of quantity, the main operating target was the current account balance on the bank's liability side. The bank increased current account balance step by step from about 5 trillion yen at the time of the introduction to about 35 trillion yen. On the asset side, the bank initially increased the purchase of JGBs and later diversified its market operations. While regarded as part of prudential measures, the bank also decided to purchase risk assets, namely it purchased equities held by financial institutions in order to address concern over the financial system. The bank also made a commitment to continue with the QE policy 
until the CPI inflation rate rose steadily above 0%. <coughs> A survey of empirical studies in 2006 summarized the effect of the QE policy as follows. The commitment to policy continuation effectively lowered the short to medium term zone the, of the yield curve through lowering expected short term interest rates. On the other hand, quantitative, quantitative expansion of the balance sheet and qualitative change in the composition of the assets, including the purchase of JGBs, had mixed effects. The survey only evaluated to what extent the QE policy had contributed to easing financial market conditions. An evaluation of more important effect, namely its ultimate impact on economic activity and prices, was not clearly conducted at that time. Since then, Empirical studies on the QE policy have shown gradual progress in terms of impact on financial market conditions and macroeconomic effects on economic activity and prices. Now, several studies examined, examined its impact on economic activity and prices. The main finding of empirical studies so far is that it had a positive effect on the real economy mainly through the stock price route. When discussing the effects of the QE policy, it is intrinsically difficult to strictly distinguish various aspects contained in the policy and analyze their effects respectively. Rather than decomposing and discussing the effects of quantity quality and commitment separately, it is important to analyze overall effects of the policy as a package. That is especially necessary in analyzing the ultimate effect on the macroeconomy. Now let me talk about an analysis based on a time series approach. Based on the recent progress in empirical research, uh, empirical studies, let me show you what I have analyzed about the effects of the QE policy on the macroeconomy. Here I use a time series approach. That approach has been frequently used to analyze the effects of monetary policy. I should emphasize that what I'm going to show you here is only a tentative empirical result. For an outline of an analytical method used here and the details of empirical re results, please see the appendix in your handout. In the basic models, production, the monetary base, stock prices, the foreign exchange rate, and the inflation, inflation rate were used. For analysis, I used three sample periods. First, March 2001 to March 2006, when the QE policy was implemented. Second, March 2001 to March 2007, extending the period for extending the period for one year. And third, March 2002 to March 2007, shortening the second period by one year. The second period took into account the possibility that the easing effect would increase as the exit approached. By extending the sample period and comparing it with the first sample period, one could assess the policy effect during the final phase of the QE policy. About one year since the beginning of the QE policy, an increase in quantity was accompanied by an increase in the purchase of JGBs. By comparing the second and the third sample periods, one could analyze whether changes on the bank's asset side represented by purchase of JGBs have brought a difference in the policy effect. So please look at appendix chart one and two, and um, I sh where I show estimated macroeconomic effects of increase in the monetary base on each of the variables, say production, and all these other variables. Sorry about these are very technical, but let me go to uh, exactly, mainly empirical results. 
So main empirical results can be summarized as follows. So first, an exogenous increase in the monetary base had a positive effect on production and stock prices and a negative effect on the foreign exchange rate, namely the yen depreciation. Note that those effects were associated with some, un some uncertainty. Second, there was a positive effect on the inflation rate in the second sample period. You can see the middle column on the appendix, chart two, at the bottom of the graph. The effect was not clear for the other sample periods. Third, comparing the first and second sample periods, the effect on production was stronger, more long-lasting, and statistically significant in the second period. It suggests that quantitative easing might have had a stronger effect through the end of the policy. First, Comparing the second and third sample period, the effect on production was weaker in the third period. The initial phase of quantitative easing was accompanied by an increased purchase of JGBs, and the financial system was uneasy at that time. The effect of a qualitative aspect might have been more pronounced in the beginning. So in summary, the QE policy as a whole had a certain effect on the economic activity, which is production here, and the transmission channel through asset prices, namely stock prices and the foreign exchange rate, was working. Its effect on prices was not clear, not, not as clear as that on the economic activity. Compared to an improve, improvement in the economic activity, the response in prices was not that substantial. This result can be interpreted that a slope of the Phillips curve during quantitative easing was relatively flat. What I have shown here is the effect of an exogenous increase in the monetary base during the, during the estimation period. Yet, we should not interpret this effect as purely coming from the aspect of quantity only. Rather, we should understand this effect coming from the policy package as a whole. Based on the tentative analysis of the QE policy's experience, what implications can we draw for the performance of the current QQE policy? Looking back on the economic, economic conditions, a virtuous cycle in the economy emerged through the latter half of quantitative easing policy period during 2003 to 2006 period. During that period, people came to have the prospect of resolving bank loan performing loan problem and financial system instability. With the tailwind of a strong recovery in overseas economies, Japanese firms made progress to resolve the three excesses namely the excesses in employment, capital, capital stock, and debt. They also made efforts to carry out structural reform and new investment spending. Those efforts were strongly supported by the accommodative financial conditions with quantitative easing and the exchange rate policy at that time. The economic recovery continued and the output gap turned positive. The negative inflation rate reduced, and the medium to long-term trend inflation rate clearly rose. In short, during the 2003 to 2006 period, Japan experienced a virtuous cycle, a recovery in overseas economies, aggressive monetary easing, progress in structural reform, a rise in potential growth rate of the economy, a sustained economic recovery, 